Back in the olden days, astronomers could only guess if there were planets orbiting other stars. These are the days when we had to wait at the bank to pay our bills. Nobody carried computers in their pockets, and those computers gave direct connections to everyone else's pockets because pocket connectivity is highly important. School was uphill both ways. The number six was brand new. We recorded images on thin sheets of transparent plastic. Five Bs were worth a quarter, and I had an onion tied to my belt, as was the style at the time. With the discovery of a mega Jupiter-sized world orbiting the star 51 Pegasi in 1995, the floodgates opened up. In the years that followed, dozens more planets were discovered, then hundreds, and now we know about thousands orbiting other stars. The bad news is that we can't get to any of them. But the good news is most of these worlds suck. You, you don't want any part of them. So for starters, their Wi-Fi is terrible. Consider Kepler 70b. This world orbits a star four times in a 24-hour period. This means it's super close and a great place to really quickly win all the Human Torch cosplay competitions. The surface temperature is a completely unreasonable 7200 Kelvin, hotter than the surface of the sun. There's the planets orbiting pulsar PSR B1257 plus 12, a millisecond pulsar in the constellation of Virgo. As they whip around their exotic host, they're bathed in intense radiation, which is generally considered bad for creatures who need functioning organs. So perhaps HD 106906b orbiting a star 650 times more distantly than we orbit the sun. You'd spend every second of your short life on that planet inventing new words for cold, and then you die cold. Imagine a world that orbits a star like our sun, a world made of about an Earth's worth of rocky material that you could just stand on at just the right distance from its star that water can exist as a liquid. This is what astronomers search for, the Triwizard Cup of extrasolar planetary research. Earth 2, Terra Nova, the Gaia, part le deux. Here's the exciting part. Astronomers have found each of these characteristics in a planet but never altogether. They found plenty of stars similar to the Sun with planets orbiting them. In fact, the star HD 10180 is incredibly similar to the Sun, and astronomers have discovered nine planets orbiting it so far, which does have a familiar ring to it. Uh, no word so far on which ones are about to be demoted to dwarf planets. They found planets roughly the same mass as the Earth, Kepler 89, with 98% the mass of the Earth. So close. Sadly, it's way too close to its parent hydrogen furnace to be habitable. They found planets in the habitable zone. Here on Earth, the global average temperature is minus 18 degrees C. Sounds cold, but the wintry nights in Antarctica absolutely wreck our GPA. The closest analog discovered is Kepler 22b, with a global average temperature of negative 11 C. So it should feel downright balmy, except it's about 2.4 times bigger than Earth and orbits a nasty red dwarf star. Astronomers have even matched up two criteria at the same time, Earth-sized world orbiting a sun-like star, but it's hellishly hot. Wrong flavor star, but with the right temperature and size, it's a veritable tic-tac-toe board of near winds. But so far, there hasn't been a single extrasolar planet discovered that meets all three criteria. An Earth-sized world orbiting a sun-like star inside the habitable zone where liquid water could be present. And astronomers were hoping that NASA's Kepler spacecraft, which would have been the first to discover Earth 2.0, in fact, it had already turned up thousands of planets, including many of the ones I've already mentioned. But sadly, just a few years into the mission, it lost too many reaction wheels, which allowed the spacecraft to change direction. It wasn't able to make enough observations to help confirm a true Earth 2.0. Kepler is still searching for planets, but with a reduced ability to point. It's only looking at red dwarf stars. But don't worry, NASA's transiting exoplanet survey satellite will launch in 2017, and it'll survey a region of the sky 400 times larger than Kepler did. 
It should turn up thousands of planets, Earth-sized and larger. And once we actually find new Terra, things get really interesting. Astronomers will search these planets for life. Now, I know that sounds almost impossible to see life from this distance, but astronomers know that if they can analyze the atmospheres of those worlds, they can detect life flourishing there. They might even be able to detect the pollution from their alien cars and heavy industry contributing to their CO2 levels and learn we're not so different after all, even if they're icky bug people. So at the time I'm recording this video, no analog Earth planet has been discovered so far, but it's just a matter of time. In the next few decades, astronomers are going to be finding that first Earth 2.0, and then dozens, and then hundreds, and even figure out which ones have life on them. It's a great time to be alive. So place your bets. Predict the date astronomers announce that we'll find Earth 2.0. Put your guess into the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Bobby Cox and Rashawn Creighton and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. A world made of about an Earth's worth of rocky... Oh.